Hi guys, my name is Meg and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to teach you how to pressure can homemade bone broth. Now I just posted a video recently on how I make my own bone broth in the Instant Pot. I also have a blog post on how to make it on the stove top if you don't have an Instant Pot. So I'll link both of those below. But my absolute favorite way to store bone broth is by canning it. You can also freeze it. It just takes up, you know, a lot of room in your freezer. And we only have one freezer and we get a quart of cacao at a time and so I just don't have a ton of extra space. Plus it's just really nice that when you have it canned it's as a liquid and not frozen so if you need some right away and you forgot to get it out it's just ready to go. So this is my absolute favorite way and it's really not all that hard. It's mostly just waiting for the canner to get done and monitoring the pressure. So let's get right into this recipe. So I have two mostly full gallon jars of bone broth that we're gonna be doing today. As I said, we just got a quarter of a steer and so I got all the bones at once unfrozen and so I've been making bone broth like crazy and so I decided to just can it as I had enough to do a full canner load. So I have my two gallons of bone broth, I have a stock pot to heat it up in, I have my big pressure canner, I have seven quart jars. I'm actually just gonna use narrow mouth jars Normally, I don't really like narrow mouth quart jars just because you can't fit your hand in there to clean it, so you have to use a brush. But buying new lids for these are way cheaper. So for things like bone broth where it's a liquid and it's easy to pour out anyway, I do use the narrow mouth ones. And I save my wide mouth ones for things like pickles or more bulky things that you have to fit in the jar. I also have seven new narrow mouth lids and seven rims. My jar lifter, which is important I also have a one quart glass measuring cup that I'm going to use to measure out water into my canner. So basically, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our big stock pot here. I think this is a little overkill, but better to have it too big than too small. This other one's been in the refrigerator for a while, so all the fat hardened and roast to the top. I'm just having to break it up with a spoon. You can take all the fat out if you don't like the fat, but it's perfectly healthy and I don't mind having it in there, so. Now we're down to the bone broth and this is how you can tell that you have really good bone broth when it gels like that, when it's been refrigerated. So this is some amazing bone broth. I talk more about that in my video on how to make it. Okay, now I'm gonna take this over and set it on the stove and put it on high. So that's on the stove and now I have my big <laughs> pressure canner here. And so when you're doing pressure canning, whether you're doing quarts or pints, you always put a certain amount of water in there and you, need, you just need to look at the instructions that came with your canner. Mine is a 21 quart Presto pressure canner and it calls for three quarts of water for pressure canning. So I have my one quart measuring cup here and I'm gonna go measure out three quarts into this canner. I always add a splash of white vinegar to this. This just helps the water not leave hard water deposits on your jars afterwards. It's not totally necessary, but it just makes cleaning up your jars afterwards more easy. So I'm just gonna put a splash of that. Just a few tablespoons is fine. I'm gonna put the lid on this and then take it over to the stove and put it on high as well. So those are just gonna go until they're both boiling so that I can put the bone broth in my jars and put them in the canner and it'll be about the same temperature so that I don't have any issues with jars breaking. So during this time is when you can go get all your other supplies gathered up. I'm gonna get all of my new lids inside the rims. What I like to do is put them in this little saucepan and then fill this up with water and put this on low because I've really found that it helps to have your lids warm, like warmer than what can come out of your faucet. Like not so much that if you stick your hand in there to grab one, it's gonna burn you, but it really adheres to the jar way better and the jars will still seal probably fine, but it helps bone broth not to come out while it's taking longer to seal, I guess. I was having trouble with bone broth getting all over the outside of the jars and then they were a big greasy mess. So having your lids a little warmer definitely helps with that. So then I also have seven quart jars all clean. You wanna make sure they're nice and clean before you start and seven is what will fit in my pressure canner, so that's how many I have clean, because I know I definitely have enough broth for more than seven quarts. I also have a funnel for ladling it into the jars so I don't make a huge mess everywhere, and a ladle for getting it into the jars. And then I also have my jar lifter handy. And then also, you'll need just a clean cloth. Uh, I'm gonna get this wet with warm water, and I'll use this to wipe the rims off on the jars so they're not greasy when we put our clean 
lids on top. So I'm just gonna wait for those to come up to temperature and I will see you when they do. So this has come to a nice rolling boil and that's exactly what we want. Just gonna kill as many of the germs as we can and this one is also boiling too, I just have the lid on. And then back here I have my little pot with the, the jar lids and that's just nice and warm to the touch now. I turned it off when it was hot enough. So. These are all ready to go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the big stock pot over here and I have my lids and my jar lifter and my cloth and I'm going to leave one inch of headspace at to the top of the jar and then as I finish each jar I'm going to take it over and put it right in the canner so that it can stay nice and warm. So let's get going. There's all my jars in there, fitting perfectly. So I'm just gonna turn this burner on and turn it to high and put my lid on. I'm gonna make sure it's settled in and, and then I turned it so that it's sealed and the handle's lined up so that it says it's closed. Then I'm just gonna wait for this to come to a boil and this thing will start steaming. That is steaming now, you can hear it, but you wanna make sure that you can actually see the steam coming up out of it. And then we're gonna set the timer for 10 minutes and let that vent and make sure that there's nothing clogged and everything's working properly. So set the timer for 10 minutes and just let that vent. So now that that's steamed for 10 minutes, I'm gonna put that weight on top of the release valve that we've been letting steam all this time. And then I'm just going to make sure the pot's still on high and then let it come up to the correct pressure. I will link the recipe that I'm using down below because you wanna have it at a different pressure for different altitudes. So for our altitude, I'm gonna have it at 12 pounds of pressure. If you're doing quartz like I'm doing, you're gonna do 12 pounds of pressure for 25 minutes, or for pints, it's 20 minutes. So I will link that chart below because depending on how, what size of the jar you're using and what altitude you're at, you're gonna have it be a different time and different pressure. But I'm gonna get it up to 12 pounds of pressure and then set the timer for 25 minutes and then it'll be done. Okay, now the timer is up and it's all done. All that's left to do is turn, I'm gonna turn the burner all the way off and then let the pressure come down all by itself. You wanna make sure you let it come down by itself and not take the valve off or anything. Just let it release naturally and then once it's down to zero, you can take that weight off. And then there's really no rush to get the jars out of the canner. Sometimes I'll leave them for hours and hours but you wanna at least let them cool a little bit because you'll have a better success rate with them sealing and none of the jars cracking if you just let them take as long as they need to to cool. But once they're all cooled off, I'm going to take them out and make sure they're sealed. If they're not, I'll put them in the refrigerator to can with my next batch. You can just recan it. Unless the jar is broken, then you just need to throw the jar and all that bone broth away. But all the sealed jars, I'm gonna take and take the rims off because I store them without the rims. I will label what's in them and the date that I canned it, and then that will go upstairs in all of my canned goods storage. And that is all you have to do. It's actually really easy and simple. It's just mostly waiting for stuff to heat up and waiting for stuff to be at pressure for long enough. So I hope this video was helpful and may maybe give you guys the courage to try this as well because it really is not very hard at all. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.